when I was a little girl. I was told at the beach if I dug a hole deep enough, we would reach China. So we've always felt a con connection there. China's a little bit angry with Nancy Pelosi, not specifically for what she said in that, although if they were, I'd understand it. It was weird. But no, they're mad that she visited Taiwan. We knew that they were going to be and they've reacted pretty much as we expected they would. But some of the reactions weren't just of the military bluster and exercise variety. They're also specifically targeted at her. They imposed undefined sanctions on Nancy Pelosi and her immediate family members on Friday after she infuriated Beijing with this trip to Taiwan. But just to be clear, she is still allowed to use the tons of information that she gets from her position as speaker to influence her stock trades and vastly outperform the market year after year after year after year. She's still able to do that. Despite the undisclosed sanctions, isn't American law grand? But anyway, people had been warning her about what this trip could produce. China was saying that they didn't want it. There were threats of fire and blood and sort of the implication that they would murder the Speaker of the House. It hasn't come to that. But I do want to spotlight the co-founder of Code Pink, Medea Benjamin, who said, way to go, Speaker Pelosi, your visit to Taiwan really helped global cooperation on critical issues like the environment. And that is a reference to the fact that in addition to the sanctions, China's foreign ministry has also announced it's ending talks with the US on climate change, military issues, anti-drug measures, and other matters in retaliation for the Speaker's visit. So. I don't know how serious those talks were. I imagine this is a big blow diplomatically, but they're saying it's it's all due to Pelosi's visit. What do you think? So Chinese foreign policy is very difficult and intricate, and I will try to oversimplify it in a way that makes everyone feel alienated. When you enter the process of learning about Chinese foreign policy, you learn one thing. Don't make China lose face. Don't embarrass China. They will lash out irrationally. They're, they don't like being embarrassed. It's very Chinese, typically. Um, that's very like Trump. It's yeah, well, it's but it's specifically like Chinese foreign policy is don't embarrass me. And there is a powder keg of embarrassment sitting off the coast of mainland China called Taiwan. It was everyone that says, like, I like that you want to do a communist revolution, but I'm going to start a new country. And America has tiptoed in this amazing way, it's we have like this one China, two China, red China, blue China foreign policy where it's like, ah, it's like, it's, you know, we, we're not taking sides here. We're gonna call you China as a whole thing, but just think of it as how, like, in the World Cup, Wales and England both have teams, but they're all the UK. Like, hard to explain and very weird. So that's one thing. So I, they have cover at least for saying we are reacting in a way that everyone with one ounce of knowledge of Chinese foreign policy knows we're about to if you go to Taiwan. But we don't have a policy against going there. That's not a thing. Um, and so she's not violating any policy. People just haven't done this in a while. Yeah. So that gets to like the most key element of this that's ripe for everyone's analysis to jump in. Is this stuff that China is doing because they're embarrassed globally? Or is this stuff they want to do anyway? Mm -hmm. And this is cover for them to say we're out of climate change talks, we're out of this, we're out of that. Or is it a combination of both? And the combination of both approach really has encapsulated China foreign policy since they woke up from their 100 year nap. <laughs> they're doing things like I'm gonna build an airport in your country, don't worry about it. And I'm gonna build roads in your country, don't worry about it, it's gonna be fine. I'm friendly China and if we continue these friendly relationships, I will use that infrastructure to my benefit to build what they're calling the one road around the world to help you guys with your country, but also transport all my stuff around the country in ways that benefit me. And if you default on your loans, it's good for me anyway, because now I just own the airport in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's Chinese foreign policy in a nutshell. And the truth is, my guess is Nancy Pelosi, if you are intimidated by Nancy Pelosi taking a trip, you're not a superpower. It seems like they are just doing things they wanted to do anyway, and that Nancy's gonna call their bluff. And at the end of the day, I don't think this will tangibly result in thermonuclear war because China has proven in the last 75 years that they're smarter than that, more deliberate, and their plans don't revolve around like a hotel tonight reservation she made. They revolve, they revolve around like, we've been wanting to do this for 100 years. Yeah. The end.
I don't know China policy very well at all. I definitely know that today they decided to fly missiles over Taiwan for the first time ever. And also that at least I think it was what 68 Chinese warplanes and at least 13 warships according to the Wall Street Journal have been circling around Taiwan and essentially doing these maneuvers on their coastline. And so it's clear that China is pissed in some way or it wanted to use this opportunity to flex. And I don't think that this is a great thing to do in this moment, particularly when you're seeing China look at Russia and Russia try to take what it believes it is entitled to. And it just really seems like not the best time to be engaging in this as in what's the point of it all? Do we really need to put ourselves in a situation where we need to get into a more war or any kind of conflict, especially when we've got another virus mm-hmm. uh, potentially looming? I'm just, I'm tired. Can't we just chill for a bit? We got the midterms coming up. Can't Nance just hang out somewhere? You know, it's like, it's like, I don't know, go to the coast in like Connecticut or just do something. I don't even know if there's a coast <laughs> there. I own a home there, but I don't know. Go somewhere, go to the Hamptons. Like, why you gotta go to China or Taiwan and start this mess with China? I just, I don't have time right now. I'm tired. Uh, last time I checked, it did have a coast. Yeah. I hope. Okay. And maybe there was a bomb drop. I don't good. know. Yeah. Um, Where else would they get their quahogs? Oh my God. Anyway, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I uh, look. I, I I'm assuming that there is not going to be war. I think that would be bad. For pretty much everyone, probably them, I would imagine. So let's not do it. That said, in terms of like them doing the stuff that they feel they have to do, like as you're saying, to not save, you know, like you wouldn't lose face if you just like projected that you didn't have a problem with it. Yeah, she could visit, whatever. We're doing our whole thing. We got our big military, we're building stuff all over. What do we care what she does? That could be perceived as strength. Um, they decided to go a different direction. So as uh, Adrian was alluding to, uh, they conducted drills, uh, more than 10 warships, uh, more than 100 aircraft. They launched 11 ballistic missiles into the waters near uh, the coast of Taiwan. And um, I, you know, I have to assume that if you're living in Taiwan or if you're, even if you're living in China, you gotta be pretty scared when you see stuff like this. Um, so I don't begrudge them that. From my point of view, I've literally never understood this sort of thing. Like you launched the missiles into the water to prove that you have missiles. We know that you have missiles. Well, we know that you have 11 fewer missiles than you did before. It's just so, and then they send the boats through and they send the planes through. We knew you had the boats, we knew you had the planes. Throw a rock in the water, honestly, I don't understand it. I know I'm being like, I'm being weird or whatever. It just seems needless because then they do it. And then we have to do it. So uh, we are going to be putting um, aircraft and warships through the uh, the Taiwan Strait, conducting air and maritime transits through the Taiwan Strait in the next few weeks. So this is all this. You know, China is going to make a little bit of, or spend a little bit of money to replace the missiles. We're going to spend a bunch of money to do this, and we're really mad about what they're doing too. Like they get blustery, and then we get blustery. We've summoned the Chinese ambassador as the crisis escalates. And by the way, we have a statement from Antony Blinken who says, there is no justification for this extreme, disproportionate and escalatory military response. These provocative actions are a significant escalation. They've taken dangerous acts to a new level. By doing the things that I just previewed, we're gonna be doing in like a week. How dare you do the planes and the ships? Hey, can we send some planes and ships over there? It's provocative when you do it. Can we we get an aircraft carrier over there? Yeah. It's all dumb. It's all stupid, but and it's all like me a boy, me want to rattle saber, measure saber. That's what's happening. China's play internationally is one of yes, they position a lot of they want to control their waterways and we largely have controlled those waterways. Um and they also have an economic plan and the time to be afraid of their military plan is when their economic plan shows shines so shows signs of failing. That's when you really need to get worried about it. I just don't think now is exactly the time of that for that, but you know, uh, stay tuned on it. And also I want to say that like, I'm trying to find out why Nancy Pelosi would go. One would be a personal financial interest that she's forwarding maybe, but the other one is they are making this giant play in the Democratic Party to appeal to like the the suburban Republican. And one thing you can do to message to suburban Republicans is to say, I am tough on China <laughs> generically. And this is a move hilariously in you know the global theater to land a plane and get off for 18 hours 
in Taipei or wherever the hell she is. I think it was Taipei. Yeah. That's it. That's Maybe. that's how yeah. hilarious foreign policy is. But it's definitely no joke to be sitting on the beach in in Taiwan and to see a bunch of missiles fly in the air. You already know how close they are, but to see like those vapor trails or whatever behind it is terrifying, and that's why they do it. Yeah. Yeah, and if this is Nancy's way of distracting from her husband's DUI, we really gotta talk. <laughs> it's like you need to get a better publicist or something, because it didn't have to be this deep. It really didn't. <laughs> you want a drink? Let's go to Taiwan, dude. Yeah. Uh, you know, and some have speculated that you know, very early on in her congressional career, she went to China. She has been talking about human rights for a long time. This could be, you know, in the waning, I assume, period of her career. A legacy thing, perhaps, or it could be a combination of multiple of these. Um, let's just hope it doesn't result in uh, LA being nuked. That would be nice. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.